Hello and welcome to Let's Build It. Uh, today we're going to build a useful piece of test equipment on the bench, but it's a bit more than just that. Um, it's actually going to be a RF signal generator, but with a built-in frequency counter. A lot of the RF signal generators have a dial and you can never quite tell what frequency they're on. And the digital versions with the frequency counters are complicated to use. You have to punch in numbers and things and you can't quickly dial from one frequency to another for testing and alignment. So we're going to do the best of both worlds here. And it's probably going to cost less to build than a digital frequency generator. So let's build it. So, um, as I build this circuit, I'm going to be going through the thought processes of building these circuits, and I'm just going to let you know what I think about and how circuits evolve and everything. So, the initial idea I had was, let's just start with a Colpitz oscillator. As you can see, extremely easy to build, and they do generate a frequency, but there's only one problem. As you can see here, the... Uh, the signal is a little on the distorted side. It's uh, not exactly a very clean signal and it's going to put harmonics everywhere which could make adjustments difficult to do because you find the signal on various parts of the band. The other problem is that the tuning range is a little limited. So if we have a look here, if we put our tuning capacitor on, uh, you can see that we have a very limited range. This goes from about 440 to 620. Uh, so tuning range is limited and it's distorted. I thought I'd try on the uh, inductor. There's a very high output but it's even more distorted and the tuning range is even less because now we're starting to load it. So that's not really going to work. I mean it'd be, it's a great if you just want to generate a single frequency simply but it's not really got the range that we want. So then uh, I had a little look at some oscillator circuits and the one that would probably be best on here is a Franklin oscillator which we have uh, here. Uh, basically it's just everything around this area. So we put our coil on there and our tuning capacitor on here and we'll power this up and uh, see how much better it performs. Now the circuit online suggested the output was from the uh, source of the FET with the resistor going to ground. However, I found that that was too a little distorted. But we do have an improved frequency range. We're going from about 680 up to 1670. So we're covering practically the whole AM band. Out of curiosity, I thought, what signal do we have on the inductor end here? And to my surprise, it was pretty clean. It's a nice clean sine wave. And I thought, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll use that. Range is uh, a little more limited because we're loading it, but we'll get round that in a minute. So frequency range is 640 to 1400 roughly at the moment. Now the only problem is, if you take the signal straight out of the oscillator, it can drift under load. So what I mean by that is that if as soon as you connect the output of the oscillator to anything it's going to change the frequency. And I'll show you what I mean. So at the moment we've got 1420 roughly on our scope. If I just put my hand on the wire, without, if we're not even touching the wire, it's the insulation I'm touching. See that waveform stretch backwards and forwards? That's actually drifting frequency. So just my body going near the wire is making us drift from 1420 all the way down to 1380. And of course we don't want that because the frequency is going to be go going all over the place every time we move the wire and stuff, so we can't have that. So the way around that is a buffer. And what a buffer does, it isolates the input from the output. So what we'll do, we'll connect our buffer up and then you'll see what I mean. So our buffer is just basically what they call an emitter follower. So signals go into the base of a transistor, collector to positive, emitter via resistor to ground. That doesn't give us any gain, but it helps isolate the input from the output. Uh, so what we have here now, we have our sine wave. 
our frequency's gone up now because the buffer means we're not loading the oscillator anymore. So that is now giving us a wider frequency range from 670 all the way up to 1640. And now what happens, if I was to put my hand near the orange wire, we're at 1641 at the moment, still on 1641. And if you look at that waveform, it's solid. So my body is not changing the frequency at all. And it's a nice clean sine wave. So that's great. So if we just wanted to generate one frequency, that would be perfect. But however, there's no audio on there. So we can't put a test tone or, or music or anything to listen to on the radio or whatever we're testing to make sure it's working. So this is where we need to do a bit of amplitude modulation. So what we need to do is have the RF going up and down in proportion to our audio signal. So the way we're going to do this here is with an FET, we're basically going to have the input going to the drain, the output to the source and the gate will be our audio in. So we have our FET stage here. So now we're going to add that and see what happens. Okay, so if we have a look, we now have a waveform. And what we're going to do, we're going to adjust the voltage to simulate the audio going up and down. And as you can see, the waveform's going up and down, up and down when I adjust the voltage here. However, you probably notice something. Our nice clean sine wave is now distorted again. And what we need to do, we need to add a little bit of negative feedback to the FET stage to uh, eliminate the distortion. So what we're going to do, we're going to connect our gate to our source of the FET like this. And watch the waveform. It's dropped a bit, but turn it back up. And as you can see, it's cleaned our signal up. And we now have our nice clean sine wave and we can turn it up and down and there's no distortion. So to modulate this, all we need to do is turn it to just under halfway. And what we're going to do now, we're going to inject audio into the gate of our FET. Like so. And we're modulating it. So what we're going to do, we're going to like zoom out our waveform as it were. And you'll see our modulation. Like so. So here's our amplitude modulation turned down and turned up, like so. So this is now our signal generator, complete, with not too many components. Now I was looking at uh, circuits for real signal generators as it were, but they are rather complicated to build. They require special coils with center taps multi-way switches, um, quite often dual gain capacitors, there's a, a lot more to a real signal generator and this one works just as well. And with the addition of just one switch and one coil we can even give it two ranges. So our existing coil will cover the AM band and we can have another coil to cover some shortwave bands if you wanted to. So that's our prototype Again, we'll uh, put links uh, if you want to download this prototype in the description. And uh, I'm just going to leave this for you to feast your eyes on if you want to build it yourself and, and put all the relative components in the right holes. So let's make it relatively clear. But again, in the description, there's going to be all the parts and the diagrams that you need. Okay, part two is going to be putting it on Vero board so that you can solder it and have the beginnings of the, the proper signal generator.